Okay, question 12, we have some polynomial fun. So first up, we're using the fact theorem. So, p of x is 30x cubed minus 7x squared uh, minus 7x add 2. We want to prove that 2x out of 1 is a factor of p of x. So, using the fact theorem, if 2x add 1 is a factor, then p of minus 1 half will equal 0. So, let's see what happens. So, p of minus a half is 30 times, uh, now, minus a half cubed is minus one eighth. And then we've got minus seven lots of minus a half squared. Minus a half squared is positive one quarter. So we've got minus seven quarters. And then we've got minus seven lots of minus a half. So that's add seven halves. And then we got add two. Now if you put that into your calculator, you will get zero. Therefore, 2x add one is a factor of p of x. Cool. Part B wants us to factorise p of x completely. So, there are a range of different methods that we could use here. I'm going to use algebraic division um, because it's fun. It's not fun, but I'm going to use it. So we know that 2x add 1 is a factor. So we know that if we divide p of x by 2x add 1, we will get a quadratic with no remainder. So, let's see then, we're going to do 30x cubed minus 7x squared minus 7x add 2 divided by 2x add 1. Okay, so, first up, we do 30x cubed divided by the highest powered x term in what we're dividing by. So 30x cubed divided by 2x is 15x squared. Now that is the first thing to go up on top. Next we do 15x squared times what we are dividing by, so times 2x out of 1, that gives us 30x cubed, um, add 15x squared. So what we now do is take that away from what's on the the division sign, but let's move it. Okay, so we now put this under here, so we got 30x cubed add 15x squared. Okay, so we now subtract that from what's under the division sign. So 30x cubed minus 30x cubed cancels out. Minus 7x squared minus 15x squared is going to give us minus 22x squared. And then the other two terms fall down. So we got minus 7x add 2. Now we repeat that process. 
So now we do minus 22x squared divided by 2x. So that's going to give us uh, minus 11x. So that's the next thing to come up on top. Now we multiply minus 11x by what we are dividing by. So minus 11x times 2x add 1 gives us minus 22x squared. Um, minus 11x. Now we subtract that from this guy. So, subtracting uh, minus 22x squared minus 11x. So, minus 22x squared minus minus 22x squared cancels out, gives us 0. So then we got minus 7x minus minus 11x. So that's minus 7x and 11x. That's 4x. And then the 2 falls down. So we're almost there. Now we do 4x divided by 2x. Which is 2. So that's the next thing to go up on top. Now we just need to make sure that we got no remainder. Sure, now we do 2 lots of 2x and 1 which is 4x and 2 and we subtract that from what we've got over here. Now that does of course give us a 0. So we've got our quadratic factor of p of x 15x squared minus 11x add 2. So now we need to try and factorise that. So 15x squared minus 11x add 2. Well, we do know that um, the two numbers inside the brackets multiply together to positive 2, but we're going to end up with a negative number in the middle. That tells us then we're going to have a minus 1 and a minus 2. Uh, now then, if we trial and error this a little bit, uh, we know we got a 15x squared. So let's try a 3x and a 5x. So if we put a 3x in there, then we got minus 2 times 3x, which is going to give us minus 6x. And then if we put the 5x in there, minus 1 times 5x is uh, minus 5x, minus 6x, minus 5x gives us that minus 11x. So, p of x is 2x add 1 times 3x minus 1 times 5x minus 2. Cool. So like I said, there's a few different ways we could have done that, but the fact is we're pretty horrible. So just using the fact theorem probably would never have got us to the answer. Okay, then part C for five marks. One does prove that there are no real solutions to the equation. 30 x squared x add 2 cos of x 
over 7 is equal to sec x add 1. Okay, so first up, let's get rid of the fraction. Let's multiply through by 7. So 30 sec squared x add 2 cos of x is equal to 7 sec x add 1. Oh uh, no, sorry, add 7. Okay, now sec x is 1 over cos of x. So we've got 30 over cos squared of x. Um, add 2 cos of x is equal to uh, 7 over cos x add 7 now if we multiply through by cos squared of x and then we're going to get 30 Add 2 cos cubed of x is equal to 7 cos x. Um, add 7 cos squared of x. Okay, so up to here, everything is now in terms of cos. Let's now uh, move everything onto the same side. So let's take everything over to the left. So we got 2 cos cubed of x uh, minus 7 cos squared. Um, minus 7, um, minus 7 cos of x, and then add the 30, and that is equal to zero. So that's where we stand at the moment. Okay, so at this point I've spotted that these numbers here are very, very, very similar to the polynomial that we played with in parts A and B. So the only difference is that the cubed term has a coefficient of two and the number term on its own is 30. Now the polynomial uh, had an x cubed term with a coefficient of 30 and a number term of 2. So what I'm actually going to do is convert this into terms of sec. So if we divide through by cos cubed we get 2 minus 7 over cos of x uh, minus 7 over cos squared add 30 over cos cubed of x that's equal to zero so 30 over cos cubed is 30 sec cubed of x minus 7 over cos squared is minus 7 sec squared of x minus 7 sec 
x and then add 2 is equal to 0. Now this is now completely relatable to this polynomial back here. So if we make a substitution to let's say let y equal sec x and then we have 30y cubed minus 7y squared minus 7y add 2 is equal to 0. Now we know from part b that this is 2y add 1 times Uh, 3y minus 1 times 3y minus 2. Check. Yep. So, this tells us that y is equal to minus a half uh, positive one third and positive two fifths. Now, if we undo our substitution so y we said was sec of x. So this is telling us then that uh, 1 over cos of x is equal to minus 1 half. Now that then tells us that cos of x is minus 2, which has no solutions. Remember, cos values can only be between minus 1 and 1. Uh, the next one we get is that 1 over cos of x is equal to a third, and that means cos of x is equal to 3, which has no real solutions. And the final one tells us that 1 over cos of x is equal to 2 fifths, so cos of x is equal to 5 over 2, which, you guessed it, has no real solutions. Therefore, the equation has no real solutions. Cool.